Hi, hi. Welcome in studio. We are back this time with our Women in Sports series. And today we have Lani Cabrera. With no any further ado, Lani, introduce yourself. Who is Lani? Oh, who is Lani? It depends on who you ask. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, kidding. But um, okay, so I am a former swimmer, a 2016 Olympian for Barbados, of course, a distance swimmer. So the long swimming, I swam the long, long, long events, which is not typical for the Caribbean. You know, we really know, do well in sprints. our, our <laughs> yeah. sprint events. Yeah. Um, and now I am more of a spectator slash cheerleader for um, aquatic sports in the Caribbean. And yeah, that's me. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So let's start with your swimming career. How did you get involved in swimming? Uh, how did I get involved in swimming? So, uh, you know, there's always that saying in the Caribbean, like, oh, you're from the Caribbean, you're from an you island, you should know how to swim. swim. Yeah. And in reality, it's tough because the two things, like, do they go hand yeah. in hand? But um, for me and for my family, my parents, we spent a lot of time growing up, like, at the beach, we were so close. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, honestly, the be beaches in Barbados are beautiful. So I think water safety was always very important to okay. my parents. Mm -hmm. And um, so we started at a very young age. My, I grew up two minutes, three minutes walking from Browns Beach, so the mm. nicest beach on the island. And it became, quickly became a thing that my family just did together. So my siblings, oh, yeah. I have two siblings and we all swam together. Um, we were up at the aquatic center swimming from phew, as long as I can remember. Can remember. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was just kind of something that we did together. We did it as a family and yeah, we always kind of stayed in, a, in aquatic sports. Lovely, so you would have been swimming from the time you knew yourself, right? Yeah. It was natural. It was something that you did with your family. At which point did you realize, oh, you could take this to the next level? Um, I guess it was kind of um, a support system I had from my family. <coughs> Excuse me. So my dad was very heavily involved in like the education of how I could use swimming to our advantage, okay. my mm -hmm. advantage. So being... Um, having an opportunity to have a scholarship at university and really use swimming to an advantage, not just for health reasons, but also kind of a, not so much a business, but mm. essentially, you know, yes. being to able to- prepare yourself in society. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But I would say for me, it was one of those things that fortunately, it kind of came naturally. So mm. I was excelling um, from a very young age, which really helped boost my confidence in mm. the sport. It was easy for me to kind of say, I want to do this again. I want to win again. Mm. Or even if I wasn't always winning, especially on a uh, regional scale, mm. I was always had to fight, you know, yeah. and I had that drive and adrenaline and that I loved and I kind of got addicted to from yeah. a very young age. And yeah, so I would say from, from very young, I kind of knew that this is what I, this mm. is what I want to do. From that age, did you, was the Olympics in view though? When did the Olympics become a goal? You know, I think the Olympics is one of those things where every young athlete kind of has it in the back of their mind. You know, if you're mm -hmm. competing and you're working really hard, you're sacrificing birthday parties, and you know, you're not, you're missing this person's party because mm -hmm. you have practice or you can't go out late because the next morning you have practice. It's one of those things where you always think, okay, well, I'm doing this. I want to, you know, I want to take it to the highest level. Um, but again, in parallel with kind of having the support system of my family, um, my siblings were great. My parent, my mom was great, but my dad kind of was the one that was like, you can really, you know, you can take this to whatever level you want to, and you're doing a great job. Why not? And, um, when I started competing for Barbados at 13 years old, it was one of those things where I would qualify for Carifta or I would make the national team. But then the swimming association would say, okay, well, pay for yourself to go. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, well, I have to pay to swim for my country. country it's a bit yeah, tough. Yeah. And my dad is a little bit of a hard ass. Well, excuse me. <laughs> no, my dad's sorry. a little bit of a, you know, like, okay, if we're going to pay for you to go compete, like, mm -hmm. let's pay to go to Florida and swim with some royal competition. So yeah. I missed a lot of the regional circuit because of that. But I think that kind of groomed me mm -hmm. for the Olympics as well. I had that international competition, let's say, from a young age so competing mm. in florida with these like big floridian swimmers open championships rather than age group carifta that really groomed me into wanting to i would say compete at the olympics and push to the to the next level 
And then I also went to university in Florida with an international coach. So he was British, a national British swimmer. But he was uh, the coach at the Florida Gulf Coast University where I went. And he recruited a lot of international girls. Oh, nice. So I had a really nice squad because mm -hmm. of him um, where he understood the importance of international competition as mm -hmm. well as collegiate swimming. And that helped a lot because we were all, I was swimming with this group of girls that really all wanted the same goal. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had girls from Hong Kong, Sweden, uh, Honduras, UK, Canada, even US, American girls. So we were kind of all just pushing for that, for that mm -hmm. same goal together. <coughs> Sorry. No, <laughs> Sorry. Um, you mentioned more than once, multiple times, your family and the support system. And I get the idea that they've been very pivotal in you getting to that level of competition. Would you say that you would have progressed and pressed through without that? Definitely not. Uh -huh. <laughs> Definitely not. I think um, um, when you come to a, an athlete as a whole, right, you have the talent of that athlete and what the athlete is willing to put into the training, etc. But at the end of the day, it's a support system. It comes right down to it, right? You have the person that's willing to take you to the practices or mm -hmm. help you get to the practices, whether it's a bus or, you know, a bicycle mm -hmm. ride or a walk to the practice. You have someone that's there like, hey, it's time for you to get out the to house get and get going. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, like, my sister and brother probably were, like, you know, they also trained hard, too. So mm. they, they were aquatic athletes, water polo after swimming. But it was them taking the time to kind of say, like, okay, well, dad's not going to be with them on the weekend because mm. he's taking Lani to Florida to compete. Mm. And that, at the end of the day, is a sacrifice, too, from the whole family. From, yeah, the you know, it definitely was a family a family effort for me. And um, I definitely have to give them credit more than more than anything, anything you know? else. Yeah. Well, okay. So you're retired now. Yeah. You're no longer a competitive swimmer, yeah. but you're still kind of sort of in the business. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I am currently working for a company called Mirtha Pools. Um, they're internationally renowned for providing swimming pools for major, major, major aquatic events, um, but also a lot of other market segments as business market segments as well. Um, but I am working with them doing brand management and partnership mm -hmm. relations. So I am fortunate enough, fortunate enough to stay in the world of aquatics, but on the other side of things. So I'm, I have the opportunity to travel to like the Olympics, major aquatic events, world championships to be able to, um, for business development reasons and working with local teams and also in like marketing and brand exposure at these events. So it's been nice. Um, I get to kind of stay in the swimming world, still see my friends cheer on my mm -hmm. friends that are still swimming, but then I just missed the 5 a.m. practice. <laughs> <laughs> it's really not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> sounds great. So it sounds like swimming has really helped you to chart a path from school to college to Olympics and then now your post swimming career. What advice, if any, would you have for an athlete who is in the business of their sport right now, competing in their discipline at the highest level, but looking for um, a job in sport? Because most people tend to think, oh, that is not, that is not a viable job is not a viable path what would you have to tell them yeah i mean it's so cliche but i would start with saying never give up uh -huh. you know it's one of those things where um you know you really have to put your focus into wanting and pushing and achieving something um and then another thing might probably the biggest of all is really to educate yourself um, and use the resources that you have locally. Um, I, this is me putting myself out there for any young athlete that is looking to for that transition or maybe just want some career advice. Or maybe it isn't even career advice. Maybe it's mm. advice into swimming abroad or getting a scholarship in the US or being put in contact with someone that could be able to help. I think one of the things for me, again, back to my dad who really understood the transition and... Um, how to move from swimming uh, uh, in the Caribbean to transitioning into basically international an international mm. competition with a degree, you know, like mm. swimming for me in the US, I was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship and I got my degree hand in hand while training for, mm. for Rio. 
But I would say one of the big things would be to educate yourself and understand that there are opportunities for yourself. And it doesn't have to stop at just what's here on the island. Because mm -hmm. as we all know, we're a small island and amenities and resources are not 100% there. So, of course, there is the factor of having to go abroad and maybe uh, we're seeing a lot of these young athletes like Mario Burke, Jonathan yeah. Jones, um, Akila, all of the, mm -hmm. the, you know, track athletes are really, they're utilizing it really well where they're going abroad, representing their country, but then also hand in hand, getting a degree while competing for a university. So I would say, yeah, educate yourself and do what you need to do to get the information to to understand what your op uh, opportunities are, what your possibilities are. And I know some of these athletes that have graduated from American universities really well, like swimming at the Olympic, uh, being at the Olympics with um, Akila Jones, for example, and Tia and a lot of these girls yeah. that have done this. I'm sure that if you reach out and ask a question, it would be no problem for any of us to kind of give that, give that advice and connect the resources. Wonderful. A mentor even to the younger athletes. Yeah, I, for, I mean, that's what we need, you know, like growing up. I remember we had um, occasionally uh, the BOA would bring in some of the past athletes um, mm. and that really, really, really changed the game for me. I mean, it didn't happen so, so often, but I mean, it was mm. it was there. And also being abroad, it was hard for me to take advantage of when they did. But now we see with the pandemic, the virtual connection is yes. more than anything. And mm -hmm. I'm living in Italy now, so there's a bit of a time difference. But, you know, mm -hmm. we can uh, we can find a way to to connect. To connect. And um, no, yeah, I think uh, kind of just I wrote a recommendation recommendation letter for uh, one of the girls in swimming a, mm -hmm. a couple months ago. And it was just kind of something that I mean, I was happy to do, you know, for yeah. It's interesting also for me to kind of be back in that world and mm -hmm. uh, help where I, where I can. And the swimming community is small, and I'm sure it's the same for all athletics. You know, sport community is small it's in small, the world, yeah. and you'd be surprised who knows who and who exactly. knows what. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Lani, thanks for coming. Thanks for sharing about your journey. Also, thanks for offering yourself as a mentor. We do appreciate that, and we do need the, these positive young voices speaking to the younger voices as they come up as you say someone that was there and someone helped you and it's always good to pay it forward of course of course and i love what you're doing here mm -hmm. with your your <laughs> it's thank you. great work um you've always been a big advocate mm -hmm. for the sport community so i hope you never lose that it's been a pleasure for me to be here so thanks for thank having you me very much. and until next time thanks <laughs> My name is Lani Kubera, 2016 Olympic swimmer, and I was in studio with Sports Therapy 101.